On this episode of The Fisherman TV, it's all about fishing skinny water for fluke. Fred Galafaro and Ken Ehlers work the shallows with bucktails, proving the point that great action is not always in the deep. Also, Mike Laptu, the diving fisherman, shares his insights on how these aggressive predators feed. You're watching The Fisherman TV, brought to you by Yozori. I think the best way to fluke fish these days, especially if you're fishing shallow water, fishing the bays, anywhere from 4 to 15 feet, sometimes even 20 feet, depending on current, uh, is fishing light tackle, spinning or bait casting. Most people are using spinning tackle these days. Um, you want something that you can handle quarter to half ounce, three quarter ounce jig heads. Uh, and we're fishing generally uh, 10 pound test braid or 10 pound test mono, whatever your preference is. For the, for bucktailing, I prefer the braid. Uh, we fish uh, uh, mono leader or fluorocarbon leader. I prefer fluorocarbon there also. Uh, and we tie direct to the bucktails, no snaps, no, ex no extra uh, terminal tackle. There we go. Well, this rod is sweet, Ken, I tell you. It's fun, right? Yeah, yeah, really, really perfect for this fishing. This guy. Oh! Well, I guess the restrictions on fluke was what uh, really started me using light tackle because when it went up to 21 or 21 and a half inches, uh, it was pretty tough to catch any keepers. So I kind of figured might as well make it enjoyable. So we started using light tackle and started concentrating on using bucktails. Uh, and fishing in the flats in Shinnecock, where I keep my boat, there's uh, a lot of sandbars and stuff like that. The water's clear, so we started, you know, using or I started using bucktails, and it's I found it enjoyable. And even if you're catching shorts and throwing them back, it's at least it's fun doing it. You know, so that's basically how I got involved. I like to jig a little bit. I like to put a little action to the jig, get it down. The whole key is keeping it down on the bottom. So. However the current is running or however the wind is blowing, whatever your drift is, if you're casting, you can adjust your cast so that the jig stays down on the bottom. Sometimes it means casting into the drift or at an angle to the drift, but um, whatever you have to do to get those light jigs to the bottom. And you will catch big fish on those small jigs. You really got a finesse in the boy. Yeah. They're funny, they're, they're grabbing it, dropping it. Grabbing it, dropping it. See what we got here. Net? Uh, oh, be borderline, yeah. yeah when netting a fish, make sure you keep his head in the water. You don't want to lift him out of the water. You want to net him head first, or you'll be chasing him with the net, you know, chasing him by the tail, and uh, and they can also jump out of the net when you, when you do it that way. Today was great because we're putting a focus on shallow water fluke fishing and they're so aggressive and they're just a dynamite species uh, to catch because they'll cooperate. They'll feed on live bait, they'll feed on a lot of different artificials and uh, they're a loyal fish. Nothing is as savage really and as, I don't mean to attribute human qualities to these fish, but really when it comes to what fluke do to feed, they have all of the proper armament. They have the ability to camouflage, so they're an ambush feeder. But when you watch them and observe them underwater, you'll see that they will move from spot to spot looking for the perfect ambush point. And when they find that ambush point, then they'll, like a chameleon, they'll blend right into the bottom. Any hapless bait fish that comes within the right strike zone and this is what's so really important to consider as a fisherman, is that your bait has to be right on the bottom. Because when they're ambushing, they're generally on the bottom, they're blending in, and they're waiting for something to come within their strike zone. A two foot long fluke is going to come off the bottom no more than a fish and a half length. So that's three feet off the bottom. If your jig is drifting way up off the bottom, 
they're not going to go after it. They're not going to expend the energy. But when they do strike, they come off the bottom like a cobra. They come off the bottom with such speed, it's absolutely mind-boggling. When a fluke does ambush something, they'll oftentimes commit themselves only when it's in that strike zone, but once they're amped up, they will chase it down. They will doggedly pursue it. When you first feel that heaviness, that means that they've actually struck the bait. But look at their teeth. They're not designed to chew, to cut, to sever. They're only designed to hold. So when you feel heaviness, that means it's grabbed the prey, but they don't gulp it down right away. You'll have a hesitation. They'll swim away with it. That's when, all of a sudden, they'll gulp it down. So the best suggestion that I can give any angler is when you first feel the heaviness, wait just a second or so and then set the hook. Don't immediately have that impulse, feel heaviness, strike. It may be just swimming off with it in its mouth sideways. You won't get purchased with the hook. You're not actually just looking for shallow water. You're looking for shallow water with drop-offs. You know, so when you have a tide coming over a sandbar, basically what, and going into deeper water, it's basically flushing, you know, whether it's sand eels or spearing or whatever, it's flushing that bait from the shallow water over into the deep water. So what you want to do is get the boat as close as you can to that shallow water when the tide is drifting off of it and just you know, swing the boat around and come off into the deeper water. And you'll find a lot of times that uh, it'll fluke and a lot of times big fluke. They'll lay right into that shallow water. Yeah, we got something here. This might be a keeper fluke or a big sea dog, a decent fluke. A lot of grass. It's borderline people. There's a lot of times where you're fishing four, six feet of water, that's all you need. Uh, that water is up and down the coast, whether you're fishing New Jersey, Long Island, uh, you're fishing up in Rhode Island, any of the bays, estuaries. Uh, those fish and some and some big fluke get into that yeah. skinny water. Yeah, you can do like really well. It's not all ocean fishing. Oh yeah, make two. As far as what rod to choose, it's it's really a matter of preference. If if you like spinning, I like you know jigging with the spinning rod because it's very comfortable in your hand and it's you could stand there and jig all day and it it really it's not tedious or anything like that. Uh, the conventional one gives you a little bit more leverage, you know, so if you did want to go up to a little bit bigger bucktail, you know, you have that and a little bit more pulling power with a conventional reel. But it's, it's really according to where you're fishing and what your preference is. They all work. Presentation is important also, uh, you know, whether you're fishing a bucktail or even if you're fishing you know, baits like spearing or sand eels or squid strip, uh, you, want it, you want it to lay straight on the hook, you don't want it curled up, uh, you know, especially using things like gulp. Uh, I see a lot of people where you know, they, they hook it up and it's curled up on the hook, it's at a 45 degree angle, it's going to spin, it's not attractive to the fish and it will affect your catch. Um, get it so that you can slide it up the barb enough when you push it through that it's laying straight on the hook, straight back. Um, and that goes with whatever rubber bait you're using on, uh, on a jig head or on a bucktail. And if you're putting bait on a, on a jig head, same thing, you know, spearing, you want that spearing straight off the hook. At the terminal end, I like to use a trace of Yozuri fluorocarbon. Uh, I like you know, three to four foot leader is usually enough uh, attached to the braid. Uh, I like to go with about 20 pound tests. Some guys like heavier leader material. 
it, but even flu can be fussy at times. So 20 pound test is fine. You know, if you're in a lot of fish, a lot of action, they're getting the bucktail in their mouth, just check your leader for frays. Uh, if there's bluefish around and you will catch bluefish, you'll catch other species on, on those jigs and bucktails. So, uh, you know, you may lose a few jigs here and there, but you will catch more fluke with the, with the lighter leader. Uh, a double uni knot is a good way to connect the braid uh, to, your, to your fluorocarbon leader. Well, guys, I guess this tide is shot. So we wrap it up for the day. We had a good time. A bunch of fish on light tackle. A lot of fun. That was great. Sounds good. Yeah. Ken, thanks for getting us out here. No problem. Beautiful water. Anytime. Right? So we get the flats, we're working those edges, catching most of the fish right along the drop off. Yeah, a lot so of fun. It was. Yeah. Good times. Good. Thanks again, Ken. No problem. Yeah. Mike, great having you along. That was a blast. Hey, appreciate it. Take it easy, yeah. man. Yeah. Anytime, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>